Sid Croft's live stream. You know, every Sunday, it's just a, a wonderful pleasure to get to spend an hour with Sid. Isn't it like, you know, they, they, they call him the grandfather of puppetry. And uh, I feel like he is my grandpa. Huh, I'll have to ask him if I can get a birthday card later on. Anyway, listen, uh, today, Sid's guest is the amazing Emmy Award winning Marina Tobina. And if you don't know her, you need to do a Google right now. Create some amazing costumes, just absolutely fantastic. A wonderful, wonderful person. And I can't wait to hear all her stories. But you know, because she's into fashion, uh, we thought uh, here we would do our own little fashion show. Hit it! <laughs> Wearing that beautiful pashmina. Yes, this 100% vegan pashmina will keep you warm on those long winter nights or keep you ready for an evening on the town. Ladies and gentlemen, this pashmina can be yours if you go buy it somewhere. All right, okay. Wait a minute, what is this? Just read it. I'm not going to read this. Just read it. It'll be fine. No, just read it. I'll, okay. Hey, who doesn't have classified documents sitting around the house? Apparently everybody does. Why not wear the classified document? Okay, get out of here. Get out of here. I can't believe it. We're not, we're not, supposed, we're not supposed to get political. Turn off the music. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Oh, for all this. Ladies and gentlemen, please, no more of our foolishness. It is time for the one, the only, oh, my tie fell off. Don't look. The one, the only, Sid Croft. Take it away, Sid. Ladies and gentlemen, the unusual artistry of Sid Croft. Love you, love you, Toily. <laughs> Thank you so much. I got to tell everybody something. Last Thursday night, Kelly and myself, well, I'm going to speak for myself just for a moment. Not for and me. Then, no, no, and then Kelly, you can, you can uh, jam in. But I got to tell you something. It was absolutely the highlight of my entire life because Thursday night, we were both invited to the Academy. Um, the beautiful museum that was just built. And there's a, I think a 1500 or maybe 2000 seat incredible theater. And it was a screening for Del Toro's Pinocchio. Whoa, I gotta tell you something. I spent, oh, it, it, was, it was too short, but it was probably a good 45 minutes with Del Toro, who's a huge, huge fan. It was like golden time with him and his wife after the show, after the movie. And it's the third time that I saw the movie. Uh, because I've seen it twice on uh, Netflix. And to see it in a theater, it's just going to blow your mind. Well, each screening that I did see, it definitely blew my mind. But just to see it on a huge, huge screen, I got to tell you, the heart, the huge heart, the soul and the explosion of creativity, it just absolutely will blow you away. And you know, the whole month of February, uh, we plan on having uh, uh, how many people? Different are creatives in, yeah, from that, that movie. are coming on. And then he promised me, and he was looking forward to it. Del Toro is going to come on. Can you believe it? 
I'm just... Jim McKenzie wanted to know if you cried at the end of the movie. Yes, I did. Everybody did. And, you know, I was the first one, I think, to stand up. And then the whole audience stood up to give it a standing ovation. And it, it lasted, oh, five minutes. It's just, please promise me that you're going to find the theater and go see it as quickly as possible. It is just, you know, it's at the top of my list. And if I ever told you, you know, I don't know why the phone is ringing. It's probably writing. Is it writing? You've got it is writing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I have prescriptions there that need to be picked up. Okay. I, it's writing. It is. <laughs> Well, uh, Kelly, next time have the phone next to you. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyway, please, please go see it. I don't want to tell you too much or anything about it. It's, like I said, it's the top, absolutely top of my list of seeing movies for the last 80 three years or more, and uh, wow, it's absolutely amazing. And just to spend golden time with Del Toro, oh wow, it, he's a huge, huge fan. It just also blew me away to listen to his wife and, you know, and both of them talking about every show, every show that I did brought up, went down the list. And, you know, we did 26, so that was just mind-boggling. Okay, you know, um, you've been watching me uh, on Sundays with Sid for almost, uh, wow, three years, right, Kelly? Yes, it's been three yeah. years. And I hope you're finding my stories, uh, you know, uh, interesting, my show business stories for the last 83 years. I love, absolutely love sharing them with you. And, uh, you know, when people have no clue what I do for a living and ask me, hey, what do you do for a living? And I always say, I'm in construction. And they always say, oh, well, oh, that's interesting. Are you uh, a carpenter or, uh, you know, a contractor? And I say, always say, and this has happened many, many times throughout my years. I always say, no, my life is always in construction. Don't you all agree with me out there that all of our lives are in construction, always, you know? as we grow up and, and our careers and, uh, and our love lives and, and everything that goes with being on this incredible, incredible planet. Oh God, I'm so grateful every day of my life. So, okay, uh, I look back at myself and what was it, that got my puppetry, you know, attention. And uh, even when I was young, you know, I tried to figure out just in order to get attention that I had to be different. So what is it that's really important? The music, the costumes, the costumes and the props. And I, I wanted to do stuff uh, in my act that was just also, uh, it, the audience would be in awe and wonder how I, I did things like that. It was almost like magic. And, uh, and that was my goal all through my career. And, and I gotta tell you something. Let's talk about costumes today.
because it's a really, really big deal. Uh, you know, all the award shows, it's one of the highlights of the award show or the red carpet, you know, and uh, it's all about fashion and costumes. And uh, the guest that I am having on today, I'm so honored. Oh, wow, wait a minute, I didn't even finish oh. my introduction. <laughs> How cool that you came on, you know, because what I, are you going to, oh, Marina, beautiful Marina, everybody, uh, because I, I wanted to say, you know, uh, you've won over and over again, best costume, uh, you've got a trunk full of Emmys, <laughs> and, and, and there's one show well, there's so many that you've done, Marina, but there's one that really got everybody's attention all over the world. And you did six seasons, six, right, of The Masked Singer. And I keep telling Marina, that was the star of that show because I tuned in every single week to study your incredible creative work. You know, we had never seen anything so spectacular. And it certainly, yeah, it got a, the attention from everybody. And that's why it became immediately the number one show. And every single week, it's the number one show on Fox, right? I believe so. <laughs> yeah. But uh, also, I want to bring up, you know, and we will, we'll bring up something that really exploded. And, and it was your last incredible project that you did with uh, Disney and Beauty and the Beast. I know everybody out there saw it. And what was the greatest thing? Because we've seen it many, many times, but to see the incredible, incredible costumes that you created, Marina, and, and on top of it all, you know, and we're going to talk in a second, uh, you know, because I always have to, you know, I have to do my introduction, you know, uh, I, I got to tell you something. Boy, I struck gold, everybody out there. When Marina came on board uh, on a huge project that we're all working on right now, and uh, I can't tell you too much about it, but maybe later I'll tell you about one costume that, and you'll know that you've never seen anything like it in your life of all the costumes. In, in this project that we're working on. And then I was going to say, ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful and talented <laughs> Marina Toybina. Hi. So, okay. Sunday. <laughs> no, thank you so much for coming on. I've been wanting to get you on, but, but you want to know something? Your career is booked like solid. There goes the phone again. <laughs> Kelly and Kelly didn't. Oh, she has it. Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> I thought she left it over there. Um, no, because your career is so solidly booked because you're in such huge, huge demand by everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, uh, well, we, we talked about. Uh, we haven't talked about the X Factor oh, yeah. and, uh, you know. Can I jump in with a question yeah. right off the bat? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you did costumes for one of my favorite bands, and I was watching your Instagram like a crazy child. My Chemical Romance. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> How much fun was We were that? both crazy children. <laughs> oh, my God. Were you just, how did that happen? How was that the creativity ball? I mean, like, I just was blown away. 
Uh, man, um, fate, you know, um, uh, I've been a fan for many years. This goes back to like my early, you know, 20s and love the music. Um, a big, huge fan and also um, just incredible fan of Gerard. And um, this past year, I was aware that they're performing in LA, that they're reuniting for a tour and why not? I reached out to my agent. Um, I, my career started in music, so it was always like a big part of my heart and part of my journey. And I wanted to give it a shot, you know, and wasn't sure if they had a designer in mind or if I was even the right fit anymore, you know. Um, and it came down to um, our teams joining together through email. And then I got to meet him at my studio. And from there, it was just um, just a beautiful collaboration. And he is a brilliant artist himself. And it was an easy conversation. And it was just a beautiful marriage between two minds of um, executing his vision. He had incredible ideas that I was just so excited and thrilled um, to come on board and make this happen for him. And at the same time, it was like, you know, food for my soul because um, not only am I coming from a place of being a fan and, and it just being so much inspired by the music. So it just made the job that much more um, special. Um, it, it wasn't forced by any means. It was just truly creating beautiful art together and finding that we're both in such unique, intricate places in our careers that this was almost like a must collaboration um you know and it, yeah that's how that happened and and it was amazing because i got to see such a unique side to his music his fans oh my god just like such beautiful people like the love that we got through our collaboration it was i, I felt like i was you know in a small way part part of their journey and um that marina you know how that i, I got to tell you if you it would take the whole hour all the people that you have dressed all the huge, huge, huge stars, you know, and uh, it's, you're, you're amazing. You're absolutely amazing. I know you, you came to this country when you were 11, right? Mm -hmm. From Moscow. And, uh, and it didn't take very long for you to be noticed. Tell us about, uh, tell, yeah. about tell us a little bit about, I know that you, you had a line first. Yes. Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. um, started very young. Um, started at around 13. I probably say like 11 to 13 was kind of like the beginning of my art days. Um, Self-taught for sewing. Um, don't really come from a very creative family side, but very supportive. Um, and then started kind of playing around in high school and getting my stuff made and figuring out how to do my own work. Uh, moved to FITM. Uh, moved to California, went to FITM right after high school, went back to my high school, did a prom fashion show there, um, did all my own designs. And that was kind of the beginning of the conversation of this was something I, I was very passionate about. And all through college, um, really, you know, kind of paved the way for myself and spent a lot of days and nights um, studying the craft at the same time researching the designers that I was falling in love with, you know, researching the history behind both aspects of fashion and costume, and really just going out there and networking as much as I could, you know, and I um, was connecting with people at my restaurant that I worked at and kind of seeing <laughs> who was coming in and, you know, having no shame at all uh, at, that, at that stage and kind of like, picking people's brains and pushing my work and collaborating with photographers and stylists and um, choreographers, which is what landed me my, <clears throat> my first break on TV, which was the X Factor. Um, and from there, it's been just, you, you think know, so you can dance. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you think you can dance and, yeah. and uh, the world of dance. Yeah. And it just went on and on. But what was the breakthrough? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I, it, it's kind of like a misconception that we're always waiting for that breakthrough. And I'm not sure if I, if there was like one, one project or one client for me, I just feel like I just kept, kept staying very consistent. So for me, it's like, even now, like every project, every client is a breakthrough, you know, because it's a, it's such a different world. And, and you know, it's like, we get to, 
experience these amazing moments with new creatives, new collaborators, like everything seemed like it was like a constant breakthrough and a step forward. You know, yeah. I probably say TV did a, a huge part of it for me in order to get to the place of Mass Singer. Um, probably for me, it was um, doing the Super Bowl. I, I think realizing the spectacle, and I've done like uh, a few world tours prior to that, so I understood like big stages and expectations, but that was truly like a night to remember, you know, and for years I was like, I'm gonna do the Super Bowl, and then it finally happened, mm -hmm. and um, it, it was just like, for me, it was, it was that moment where I just learned so much. I've never worked with puppetry, you know, and we did a few puppets for that show. We did, you know, the standing palm trees that had to sing, <laughs> and the sharks and the beach balls. And all of that was just such a unique experience for me because I have to dive into such a different world of construction, such a different world of design and um, almost like work in a sense of science when it comes to art and, and learning fabrication and not just design and not just textiles. But I think that for me personally set it up to the, to the next level. Well, I can relate to what you're saying because my career, you know, it, all of our careers have been like a huge snowball. You know, one, uh, I, I have a tree house. And the reason I built my tree house because it's 30 feet up in the eucalyptus tree and it takes every step to get up to the top. Yeah. And, and that is our careers, you know? And when you have the talent and, and, and the audience, you know accepts your creativity and you know and you're just you explode you explode yeah you know? and, and then it's the pressure of staying consistent you know and yeah. um i think along with that for me i never settled you know i i always wanted to grow and learn and the many conversations you know you and i even have it it's constantly sharing stories and hearing other people's backgrounds, you know, and, and how are things created? And even the videos that you post, I go back and I study them and I'm just like, wow, you know, it, it's like art is ever evolving. And I think that that's what it really was for me personally, you know, it was, I, I never lost that hunger for art um, and being able to pick people's brains and not being scared to ask questions and many things I don't know how to do. I'm still learning and teaming up with people that every day I, I'm very present to hear, I, I think, how other artists evolve. And I, and I think that's very important, you know? That you know what's interesting to me? I go back to 1945 and I was in the Ringling Brothers Circus and Miles, uh, no, no, uh, Miles White, famous, famous costume designer. He did the Ziegfeld Folly, you yeah. know, and, and he was a Broadway costume designer. And he, there were 1,800 people in the show. Can you imagine dressing <laughs> not only 1,800 yeah. people, but all the animals, the blankets yeah. that were also, you know, like the costume that the, all the animals wore. You know, we had 50 elephants and 150 horses. And, you know, and uh, the menagerie was bigger than any zoo. So the menagerie, all those animals were in the big spectacle in the big parade, which lasted, it was the closing of the first half. Oh my God, but the costumes. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm right here, which is really interesting. I was told that purple, the color purple, is never used in the circus because it's bad luck. Am I right? I've heard that and the white owl. And the, so two the things. white owl, you're right. Yeah. I have used both. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, I, I've heard that theory, especially for theater and stage. That purple is not the color you play with. Um, not sure where that stems from. Um, I, I a little bit stay true to that, um, but it's also a hard color to avoid, <laughs> not to use in detail work, so. I've also had the honor, you know, when Bob Mackey was on staff at NBC, 
in the costume department. Uh, I recognized his talent and he, we were on the Dean Martin show. I don't even remember the years. It had to be, wow, whatever. <laughs> it, it was a long, a long time ago. We were regulars and he dressed the puppets yeah. on that show. It was an NBC show. And, and then Pete Menefee, you know, who did uh, the Rockettes and, and, and Radio City Music Hall, and, and of course, Jubilee in Vegas with, you know, I mean, those un incredible, incredible costumes with Bob Mackey, you know, all the showgirl feathers and, and a lot of spangles, yeah. And I worked, you know, Pete Menefee did, uh, oh, what a great, great job. He did a couple of shows for us, but he also did the Brady Bunch Hour. Oh, amazing. Where, where we had, he posted that not so long ago. Yeah, so, you know, where we had the swimmers. And it, was, it was insane. And he told me a story that, uh, who was the famous swimmer? Uh, oh, wow, why have I gone blank? That, that did all the, the big 40 movies. Uh, uh, Esther Williams, I'm sorry, Esther Williams. And uh, he had a conversation with her and he said, how come your hair is always in place when you get out of the water? She, she said, you have to just load it with Vaseline. And so <laughs> all of our girls had tons of a bucket full of Vaseline in their <laughs> hair. <laughs> and, and those are really interesting stories, you know, because when we did our Broadway show, which never made it to Broadway, it was called Broadway Babies. Um, we had uh, William Ivy Long. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Who amazing. did all the costumes. And it was a show uh, with 36 little kids. That's it. And all the adults were played by life-size puppets. And, uh, and it, was, it played at the Goodspeed Opera House for six weeks, sold out. You couldn't get near it. And every number that those little kids did, I didn't want the kids to be any higher than the piano. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, every number they did, some of the numbers lasted eight, 10 minutes, 12 minutes got a standing ovation. It was just amazing. Tommy Toon started, you know, uh, uh, directing that show and choreographing it. And then he quit because he could, the kids were driving him crazy. <laughs> and his assistant <laughs> took over, you know, 36 kids, yeah. you know, to get their attention and make sure that, you know, every performance is, <laughs> is clean and accurate you know so he quit <laughs> well, that's, you know it, it's interesting because like you, you're mentioning designers that are so like vest on on you know like and broad and like what they can create and i think that's you know even for me what's so important is to be able to like understand and educate myself and um and like own those pockets because even doing puppeteer costuming or children's costume, those are two different worlds. Of course. You know, I feel like even the designers that I've studied from, you know, the 20s, 30s, the 40s, there was some sort of a, a hidden rule to be able to experiment with all these different avenues of costuming. And it wasn't just as specific as it, as it is now, you know? I feel like you, you meet a lot of people that are just so straight in their lane I only do this or I only do this. And, and I think for me, I, I've never been that type of costume designer. Like I, I get bored, you know, <laughs> if, if I'm in, in, a, in a place where I, I perfect just one thing, I feel like it's a disservice to a lot of uh, many of us that are in the artistic field. So, so it's, it's interesting, like er, everything that you're mentioning and well, broad you know, way. it was, it was yeah. just, I mean, so broad way. Odd, we always right? look, the most important thing on Broadway are the costumes because, you know, they have to be so inventive right. and the choreography, the two most important things in a Broadway show. And of course, 
a great story and great, great music too. But I remember seeing in the 50s, I can't remember the name of it. It was, it was a Broadway show called La Plume something, whatever the other words were, the feathers of whatever. And Erte did the costume. Right. Erte. I mean, it was just, I mean, that's why people went to see that show. Yeah. No one ever saw anything like it. Exquisite you, details, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, our business is unreal, isn't it? We get paid for this. And look at the good time that we have, you know, <laughs> in, in creating, in creating magic, you know. Yeah. And I just could never believe it that they even paid me for that, you know. But we're having such a good time, like doing the Masked Singer. Wow, so inventive. And everybody waited to see what the next costume was going to be. Oh, and I don't know how the hell you <laughs> did it every every week, you know, to just construct anything like that. When I did my puppet shows for all the Six Flags, you know, uh, Bill Campbell, Bill Campbell, Bill, he, I discovered him at Berman's. He was just at Berman's, that's a costume, a rental house. And I used to get my Halloween costumes there. I went as Elvis Presley one year and who knows, whatever, you know. But and those are the moments, that, those are the moments yeah. where the that stay somewhere, you know, whatever location they're at or however they start in their careers, they study, they learn, they network, yeah. you know, they consistently educate themselves to understand that an opportunity comes around, you're ready. You know, even if it's, you know, with Mass Singer, there's so many trials and errors. There are so many parts to it that we were figuring out from season one to two to three. It never, it never really stopped. Um, How much time did they give you to do the costumes on Mass Singer? An hour. An hour. Um, an hour. Um, I know. I yeah. definitely sensitive time frame. Um, I had about six to eight weeks to do all the renderings, come up with ideas, uh, you know, illustrate what we thought the show would look like. Um, and the turnaround stage, once we started getting the talent and, you know, working with them on picking the right costume, or they had ideas, which would that take me back to the drawing board, you know, and I had to start over on all the artwork, probably about two to three months to really build them up, build, the whole world, you know, and then we were going like, even if costumes were on stage, I didn't stop till they were live. <laughs> you know, we were like adding little things after camera blocks and dress rehearsals and making sure things were not just like beautiful on stage, but also practical, you know, being able to control the weight, being able to control um, dimensions of fabrication that were being used, making sure nobody had allergies, people could breathe, people could see, everything became like well, an experiment. With that, you're dealing with a, a singer that right. comes in the last moment, right? Right, and oh, so yeah. the fitting, <laughs> the fitting them because some could be six feet tall, the others could be, you know, yeah. seven four or whatever, and you just can't build a costume ahead of the uh, actor. There's that's... moment. There's moments I got lucky where we were able to build ahead. You know, mm -hmm. uh, when we knew that if we had early casting in the show, um, we knew that those are the costumes we'd start on first. But many times I would be like sitting there <laughs> with the producers being like, guys, I have a week. I have three days. You know, the, these are not easy costumes. There is a safety factor that comes with this. Um, there's a health factor that comes with this. That it, it was definitely um, a moment where we were ma many nights. It was not an easy sleep. Um, Marina. <laughs> work the next day. <laughs> How how big was your staff? Um, in the beginning, I've always kind of had a skeleton crew um, when we were just first processing the artwork. And, you know, as I said, talent was kind of like slowly coming in um, as they were being booked. And, and towards the middle to end of the show, probably 40 people all together. Um, you see, and that's also like the shops that were helping us out. So yeah, it, The audience doesn't realize that, you know, 
I'm I'm sitting watching Pinocchio, right. and then the crawl, and there's a thousand people that did that movie, a yeah. thousand, mm -hmm. or, or close to a little television show that we did, you know, Donnie Marie or whatever. It's hundreds, hundreds of people, not counting the cast. Right. And, you know, to sit at home and just switch it on and watch it, we never realize, you know, what. Oh, my gosh. That takes what it took <laughs> to put that show on. And when we did Donnie Marie or Barbara Mandrell or the Brady Bunch or, uh, you know, all the variety shows, we did 20 specials just to do a special, right. an hour special, you know. I mean, it, it's great when you do a series because you can use different elements over and over again and you have departments and you, you know what you're facing. But, you know, the puppet shows at Six Flags, it took me a year, one solid year because I also did the music off of, you know, Needle Drop. Yeah, you know, and it, it took three months to put all that together. I brought in musicians right. to give it an ending or tap dancers or voice people, you know. It's just, but what fun, Marina. It, it was, I mean, it was, you know, it, it was definitely, I got to work with some incredible people. Never would I, you know, if you asked me 10 years ago, if I would ever see those names <laughs> in front of me, no. So it, it it was definitely an incredible opportunity to be able to be part of their journey and they were part of my journey. But yeah, go, going back to what you're saying, what people don't realize at home, I mean, when I'm talking about 40 people, that's not counting the hours it's split between those 40 people. And know? what about your oh, hours? I don't Yeah, Look my, my, my egg. <laughs> that eight you days sleep? a week, 20, 25, yeah. eight, and right? And you have yeah. children. I do. You have young children. Oh, wow. I was pregnant with both my kids through every season of Mass Singer. <laughs> every single, it would, became like a joke on the show that because we wrapped one season that would go into the next one and I would still be. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, um, you know, a, a very difficult experience. But again, it all goes back to the years it took me to also find my team. You know, I think it's often that we talk about the creators and how important the designers are, but just as important and it's having the team that I have, you know. You, and you were also telling me about Beauty and the Beast, yeah. you know, that, I mean, here you have to do your own thing, but yeah. yet you have to be so careful yeah. in not touching, you know, a classic like that. But yet what you did was beyond what they did. Yeah. And, oh, God, everybody out there, if you haven't seen it, you know, it's on Disney Plus. It's just amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that means so. It truly is such an honor to hear that come from you. Um, well, no. It, come on. It, 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 it was a, a special project, you know. And, and again, you're right. It's um, definitely designing something off a blueprint is not easy, you know. And, um, I, I think the fact that we were so careful and strategic about the moves that we were making, and we had such a small knit of creatives that somehow, no matter what happened, we were all, always on the same page, and that made it a little easier. Yeah, you know? like, yeah. it, like it took months for me and the director to understand how we're going to create this. You know, it, it wasn't just a one-time discussion. It was like many calls, many hours spent being like, "Hey, we agree to disagree," or you know, "This is what we need to do," and also the amount of research that I did. Um, months and months of research before even, you know, took the pencil to, to pen and paper and trying to figure out how, how to make these characters come to life. And of course, the beast part of the show, I think was probably the coolest part, you know, oh. as we went the <laughs> route, uh, rather than uh, going, you know, into any kind of prosthetics or a mask, which was um, a very interesting part for me to be involved with, you know, I was there with my team every step of the way. And, um, I, again, I, I think it's so important, you know, to be able to be that present because I had to learn so much. It wasn't just like, oh, here, I'm coming in with 20 years of experience. I'm great. I know it all. Now, this was, you know, for me, I, I took a step back and I'm like, I'm going to bring the best people to work with me and I'm going to be by their side and I'm going to learn new ways of pattern making, new ways of fabrication, new ways of building, um, 
new ways of materials. It, it was definitely a unique, unique process. I, I gave it my all. <laughs> if anybody's I, watching well, it, it, it has my tears, my blood and sweat in every, every single thing, part. Everything that you do, everything. I mean, you're, you're such a killer creative person. You know, I mean, wow. The, the, the stuff that you did for me, every single drawing that you did, just, it, it blew everybody away, connected with this project. Never saw anything like it. And that's what we wanted, you know? We wanted something like you've never seen before. And uh, the whole project is that. And uh, I can talk about one, just one costume. Can you believe that Marina designed and it all, it's worked out. The whole costume is a real waterfall. A waterfall. The whole costume. It's, it's just, it's mind boggling. It really is. You know, I also, um, oh God, what was I going to say? Uh, you know, I was, I, I was only in this show on Broadway I did a Broadway show where I was in the show for a year and it was right next to Radio City Music Hall and the whole show, there were 150 people in the cast and the whole show was on ice. So I had to learn how, how to ice skate and I walked away with all the reviews. I couldn't even skate and I, you know, I mean, no one ever saw anything like it with my puppets, you know, but, <clears throat> and then I played the Roxy Theater, which is just down the street, beautiful, beautiful theater, and also in a nice show, and Ben-Hur <laughs> was the movie, so, you know, you just hoped when you got booked into a theater that had a movie and a stage show, that the movie is a big hit, because then you're, your contract goes longer, you know, right. instead of being booked in for a week or two weeks, you know, you could be in that show for like six weeks. But after I finished, this is really interesting. After I finished in, it was a terrible title. It was called Howdy, <clears throat> Howdy Mr. Ice. And it was Sonny <laughs> Annie. Point. Yeah, oh my <laughs> God, of 1950 but it was really 1949, right? And, and Sonia Henney, it was Sonia Henney, the big famous ice skater, the first Olympic ice skater. And you've seen movies of her skating on black ice. And I asked her, how did, how did you do that? And she said, you just prayed that you didn't fall because they wet the ice and put ink <laughs> so it looked like a mirror. They put ink on the whole life. And if you fell, that's the end of your costume. And you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know how hard it is to get ink off your finger? Oh. Can you imagine your whole body <laughs> in those days? But oh. after I replaced and that got injured, and there was a, a, a Broadway show called The Peep Show. And it was Michael Todd's Peep Show. And it was... Oh, vaudeville, but burlesque, yeah. And uh, and I don't know. They probably had 50 girls in it. And, and it was the scandal of Broadway because they had a, the whole stage was a bubble bath and uh, the girls were all supposedly naked, but they really weren't in this big bubble bath. And they went on strike because the bubbles had some kind of a chemical in it. And oh, no. it, yeah. and it, it uh, turned their pubic hairs purple. <laughs> and so <laughs> it, was like, it was like the scandal of Broadway. And they were, you know, picketing <laughs> the, the show. The entire show, they're in a bubble bath. No, 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 no. Oh, I was, it was a big like, well, that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Just sit oh, in a bubble God. bath. 
I'm like, no, the bubbles sure everything don't. will turn purple. No, 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 bubbles don't last that long. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Somebody's pumping them through the back. Oh you know, my God, magic. now you're getting an idea and I just know you're going to do a costume. Oh no, thing. I'm already thinking black eyes, bubble bath, and bu yeah. Bubble bath. Yeah, <laughs> perfect purple pubic hair. With tubal, yeah. purple pubic hair. <laughs> oh. No, and so that was one of the things that I never forgot. But yeah. when I was at the Lido in Paris, I met a costume designer. He, he later designed the costume and forgive me, you know, I don't know his name. I have to look. He did drawings for me for a project in Japan. Oh my, my God. It was uh, an amusement park that was going to be a, across the street from Disneyland. And, you know, that didn't happen because of the economy going to hell in Japan and and this was a three billion dollar project but i worked on it with with wet you know the found the yeah, wet yeah, yeah, just, yeah. yeah and oh it's just amazing every time i look at it you know it was just way before its time and it was in a dome that was like four football fields and it had a lake, and it had a desert. And, oh God! It had a jungle, and it and it had a snow mountain where it really snowed. It had a sky, you know, and the weather changed. It rained in there on the on the people, you know. And, and uh, did I have to ask? Okay. <clears throat> Just because you've seen this around so much, do you think that there is a point of the industry where it used to be more innovative? It used to be more creative than it is now. I know we're always talking about the technology and like advancements that we're seeing in CGI and <clears throat> you know, like building places and building parks and building theaters. It seems to be more and more and more. But I feel like the more I even like for me, the more research I do, it seems like back then we were actually a little bit more creative. Oh and fearless well, you know? well now everything is done through computers right. even designs and right. no we spent when we had the show business factory we spent i had 20 some odd or maybe 25 artists and i didn't even have an i had sort of had an office right. that i was never in i sat with them you know all day long because that's that's the heart of everything that we were doing is designing the characters, designing the costumes. You know, I found Nicky Nado, who was my the head of of the art department, okay. and he gave us the croft look. He was a ballet dancer, right. you know, and 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 when I played the Roxy. A block over, uh, you know, was uh, I don't know, the New York City Ballet Company. And after the show, all the performers used to go to this restaurant uh, after the show, and you know, and have hamburger or whatever that they were famous for. Right. And it was just performers, and it was way over on Ninth Avenue. Right. And so. He came up to me and he said, you know, I saw your show at the Roxy. I'm, I'm an artist. I want you to look at my book. And I said, I'm a, just a puppet act. You know, I mean, what, what, you know, I've got my act and the costumes, they weren't done by anybody famous. When I played the Lido in Paris, Pierre Valman, Pierre Valman dressed my puppets, you know, in minks and you know and the only thing i the, the costumes were unreal but i like glitter we and we both <laughs> love glitter you know and pierre Balin, you know i mean that was the couturier of of paris you know and and he also dressed me and and i he made suits for me 
that I couldn't sit in. People call me <laughs> living statue. You know? yeah. <laughs> no, but to get back to that, you know, I'm, I'm really the wrong person to ask because as far as I'm concerned, it's so hard today to find someone with a background. Right. You know, I mean, come on, my background. People say to me, where, how did you get all these ideas from? It's because I was in Vaudeville. Doesn't right. exist anymore. I was in burlesque. Doesn't exist anymore. You know, I was in a circus. Doesn't exist anymore. Ringling Brothers right. is coming back, but right. it'll never be, yeah. it'll never be like when I was in it, you know. Because and, it's, it's, it's interesting. A lot of, you know, um, my dear my dear friends in the industry like we all try to brainstorm like what is it like why aren't ideas sticking anymore you know why can't we everybody wants to collaborate everybody wants to get work together but you find yourself in almost like this hole of not being able to put it together anymore not knowing how to execute things you know and then things ending up all looking the same and i think a lot of us are struggling with that because there's a few left you know that are hanging on to and no art and, and no yeah yeah, no one wants to take chances right. because, you know, time is money yep. and they just, they're so afraid. I mean, what's happening right now? I hate it. Reboots, you know, dangerous to do reboots because if you change it, right. we did Land of the Lost, the movie, and it was changed and the audience will not accept that, you know? And it's very rare that a reboot, you know, uh, makes it, even though, yes, Broadway right now, all the shows that are making it right now, and I spoke to a, a huge star that's on Broadway, said all these creative shows closed because they weren't familiar. And now, you know, all the familiar, your shows, Chicago's winning the longest running show on Broadway. People want the comfort of something that's familiar to them. It's 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 the best we have. Yeah, we have the best uh, profession on the planet. It's hard to break into, right. but <laughs> everybody out there, you know. We're all creative, and boy, you're, you're all loaded with ideas, and just stay focused. That's, that was how I, uh, you know, uh, created my whole career. I got an idea, and I wasn't all over the place. I wanted to spend the time, if I felt in my mind that it was a great idea, I right. wanted, you know, to stay focused and get that idea done you hit many brick walls because after you think you have a great idea and you think about it and you go oh now wait a minute it's like all of our characters you know you got to make sure that they're capable of giving you stories they're not right. just right. great characters right you know great looking characters what's their background you know i mean it's amazing. Your career is amazing because I read all about you, you know, and and your ladder that you have climbed, you know, and when when you have a, a ton of creativity, you know, you're going to get there. You're going to get there, but you have to, it's a battle. Right. And we've all had rejections. Boy, I've I've had my share of Oh, rejection. they're still happening. And I, and I think a of lot course. of people know that. You know, you think that you get to this place and, and you're, you're being judged by perception, you know, of, of your followers or your fans. And, and it's, it, it's always difficult. You know, it's like, for me, it's like every single time a job ends, it's like, now what? You know, then becomes the real well, thing. We, we always, forward, yeah. you know, and, and 
you know, starting a uh, starting over and kind of having that grind and that hustle, it, it never really ends, you know, because like you said, it's like there are many ideas and there are many things I want to jump on board. And there's many people like a gym still on here, you know, that um, love to collaborate and work with. And it, it's always that process of like going back to the drawing board, you know, and, and that's that's tough mentally. And, you know, and who is on your list of dream people to work with? Sid Crawl. <laughs> <laughs> yes and that came true look at that manifestation no um, oh no no, no but re really said like what we're doing is, is beyond incredible it um really is and and you know i know you, you haven't seen the latest pitch or, or you, you you don't you know we've kept it a secret and uh and and uh kelly you know I keep telling Marina in the next couple of weeks, no, I want David and, and I want uh, Debbie Allen to be in on it too, David Copperfield. And you know, when we do it, because yeah. they just think you're, you're beyond, you know, no. and what you've done for us and this project, it's got to happen. It's going to happen. And it's just going to blow the world away. And I'm so proud of all the people that connected with it and you know and everybody not one person has said to me well call my agent no one no one has said that to me or i'm too busy you, you know I, I love your work or you know i've heard all that before right. we we all have heard that oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> but everybody has said no i'm on board i'm on board that makes me feel so good because, wow, I came up with the idea. Oh, and it's an incredible idea. And, and yeah. Like, it brings back and to, like, all the art. It's all going to be, it's yeah. Amazing the narratives, I, the moods, the tones. It's all there. I can't wait for all of us, you know, all this creativity to really put their, you know, their entire energy you know and creativity into it then it's it's even going to be more explosive you know awesome. but, but let me tell you something we have been on for one hour and <laughs> one hour and there's so much to talk about you know yeah and 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 i had i had other things on my mind because the audience out there, we're watched by people, of course, all over the world. And, and they're so interested. And thank you for all your interest in listening to my stories and my career. Because I really feel when we started it, that if there's just something that you can find in my journey, something that you can use on your journey, we all have different journeys. And you know, and oh God, that, that would make me so happy. And that's the reason when Kelly, you know, said, you've got to come on and tell, yeah, people know about Puff and stuff, and, but they don't know the 20 solid years, you know, before all that magic on television yeah. and the movies that we've done. And your career, you know, I mean, you told us you started really, really young. You know, my mom and dad, with that crazy war that's going on right now, so sad. My mom came from Odessa and my dad came from Kiev, you know, and they, they met in 1923 and they had to run away the same crap that's going on right now, insanity from the Russian Revolution, you know, and I don't want to end on, on this note, but, uh, you know, they, they had nothing, and they ended up, they wanted to come to America, but they didn't have the proper papers, so they ended up in Canada, and that's where I was born in 1929, you know, and that was the Great uh, Depression, and it was even bigger bigger in Canada and you know and of course I'm getting blamed for it because I was born on that year <laughs> you should yeah. it's fine 
but but Marina, thank you. You know, we can't go over an hour, or they yes, yes. they knock us <laughs> off, or we don't get good numbers or something. I don't know what it's all Just about. causes him to complain more. No, and I love to complain <laughs> and everything. But everybody out there, and Marina, thank you so so I much. Love you with my whole heart and this is just incredible and i'm just so looking forward to our journey and you have been so well so thank you thank you so much. and you know i uh would you come back yes we've got to do it again <laughs> because we've got so much you know people love hearing how how did you get there? You know, how did this all Can I silently sit behind you when you and Del Toro talk? Because to answer Kelly's question, it's him and Tim Burton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those are like the two in my mind, so. Oh, wow. I feel that way too. Isn't Kelly? I'm going to come be your assistant while you're working for them, okay? Oh, I can. No, both. <laughs> but if I can secretly sit right behind Sid when that's yeah. happening, I'll be quiet. No, no, Super you can't, can't have Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> Kelly is everybody should have a Kelly, and I keep saying that all the and time. And then he will never you, give me up. And I won't give her up. I mean, oh, Kelly, no, you cannot have Kelly. <laughs> yeah, oh, you can for a day or two, maybe, you know, but uh, like a like a library book, I'm on loan for yeah. <laughs> just a <long. laughs> Okay. Oh, wow, we you. got a half a minute. I know, I know, hey, I know. You gotta go. <laughs> stay. I want to just tell everybody, thank you so much, and I'll, I I want to see you next week. We're gonna have we're gonna have somebody interesting. We've been working on it. The week after, Tamlin's coming on. Tamlin Wright. Amazing. Yeah. You know. Oh my God, Tamlin Wright. I can't wait for Tamlin to come on too. And uh, of course, she's on this incredible project that we're working on, and uh, and she is the queen, you, and you are the queen. Oh, so, thank you. wow, I'm having one week after another <laughs> the two queens of the world. Sit by your phone; he's going to call you. And oh, I yes. am. I'm going to call <laughs> you back. Thank you so so much, thank everybody. You, love you, love you. And Thanks, I love, Kelly. Love you so much. Thank you for coming on. Have a beautiful Sunday. Thank you, everybody. Bye, guys. To be continued. Bye.